Amen. Amen. Lord, we do worship you. Amen. We worship you for all what you are. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gathering. Amen. We gather again into your name and coming to your word. Amen. We say, Lord, we thank you that you know. Amen. We love you. Amen. We pursue after you. Amen. This is why we all are here, Amen. waiting on you Amen. to listen to your speaking. We believe you will speak to us up to date. Amen. We trust in you. We trust in your mercy. Amen. We trust in your blessing. Amen. We trust in your presence. Amen. And we trust in your spirit, blood, and the word. Amen. How we thank you for the divine provision. Amen. So rich, so prevailing, Amen. so refreshing, Amen. and so touching. Amen. Now we look into you for your anointing. Amen. Anointing the whole congregation, Amen. anointing every attendance, Amen. anointing every activity, Amen. especially anointing the speaking and the hearing. Amen. Be one with us, Lord. Amen. We are here Amen. looking unto you. Amen. We like to be one with you. Amen. With you in your speaking. Amen. Lord, do speak. Amen. Do speak your word. Amen. In our speaking thoughts of you, Amen. thank you. Amen. Cover us. Amen. We can never forget your enemy. Amen. Defeat him Amen. and shame him. Amen. Now is the time for the enemy to be saved Amen. and for you to be blessed Amen. and for all of us to be taken care of. Amen. Now we do thank you again. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful to the Lord that uh, he would have given us <coughs> uh, this gathering again. I believe this time we nearly have so many dear ones from the country, from other countries, and uh, by the faces we can realize this. Up to uh, the day before yesterday, I got to know that the hotel has uh, already over 900 rooms booked. Uh, I believe today it should be more. But anyhow, we are here. Amen. We are here for his speaking. Amen. And this time, the burden is to go further and deeper into the first chapter of Ephesians. The law wills, the following conferences in other places will get on <clears throat> Ephesians 2, then another Ephesians 3, then another conference Ephesians 4, another conference Ephesians 5, Amen. the sixth conference will be Ephesians 6. Amen. Now this time, to speak on Ephesians 1. It is somewhat uh, heavy to me and a little hard to me. Not so easy. So while you are listening, please pray for me. Uh, I do mean the Lord has shown something very, very deep. I believe deep to the bottom. So, humanly speaking, we are short of expressions. Anyhow, at the beginning I would say what the Lord has shown us in these years, I mean after I wrote all the notes on Ephesians which are now in your hand, uh, the Lord keep <coughs> working with me to show me the depth of Ephesians chapter 1. Nearly for centuries his people uh, have uh, neglected, missed the real, real mark. I'd like to tell you 
Tonight, firstly, I will stress the word dispensing. Uh, have you noticed the general subject is the issue? The issue here signifies the church, the body of Christ. The church, the body of Christ, is the issue. In the whole universe, there is such a thing that has issued out in the church, the body of Christ. And this issue is of the dispensing of the processed trinity. I don't say the triune God here. I use the word trinity. A kind of threefold dispensing of the processed, the processed trinity and the uh, transmitting of the transcending Christ. The dispensing is of the process of Trinity and the transmitting is of the transcending Christ. The Trinity has been processed for this dispensing and the transcending Christ today. He is in the highest in the universe as the transcending one. What is doing there? He is there transmitting. I know you know this word, electricity, transmission, right? There is a kind of a heavenly spiritual transmission going on all the time from and by the transcending Christ. It's really something. Now, the first message is the issue of God the Father's dispensing. Threefold dispensing, not three kinds of dispensing, but threefold. One dispensing in threefold. One fold is of the Father, and the second fold is of the Son, and the third of the Spirit. And this full dispensing of the Divine Trinity speaks for us God's eternal purpose. Amen. I'd like to check you all, with you all. <clears throat> what is the eternal purpose of God? God is great. As a great God, surely he has a purpose. <clears throat> And the purpose is always the intention of a desire, right? In eternity past, our God did have a heart desire. And this desire became his intention. And in this intention, there is a purpose. Now, what is purpose? There are things in brief. The purpose of God in his intention, according to his heart there, is to have many sons. God loves to have many sons. Many sons to be his expression in a corporate way. So what? So he created the universe. And the center of his universal creation is man. Man is the center. For man to live, God prepared the earth. And the earth has to be under 
the blessing of the heavens, from the heavens, the earth receives sunshine, rain, and fresh air. Right? Then, on this earth, at the center, God created a man. And don't forget Zechariah. 12, 1 says, uh -huh. God spread the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth and also create a spirit for man. Yeah. So we used to say the heavens are for the earth and the earth is for man. And man has a spirit for God. Amen. For God to do what? For God to produce many sins. You just think about how could we, the created human beings, become the sins of God? By adoption? Surely not. Then by what way? By begetting. God did beget us. And we know <clears throat> to beget needs, needs to impart your life into what you want to beget. And this impartation is what we call dispensing. In Ephesians 1, yes, there is not such a word, but there is such a strong fact. Just like in the entire Bible, there is not the word of triune God, Trinity, but there is such a fact. So the earlier church fathers for the expression they invented the triune God, the Trinity, and so forth. It is the same way we discovered in Ephesians 1 something too, too extraordinary. That is the triune God for the fulfillment of his intention that he could be satisfied in his desire, he did something wonderful. That is to dispense himself into his chosen people. To dispense, to impart himself into his chosen people, making them all his sons. So, when we come to the New Testament, in John chapter 1, we are told clearly, when he comes, whose I will receive him, and he will give these believer ones the right, the authority to be the children of God. Amen. And these children of God are born of God not born of man, nor born of man's will, nor born of man's flesh, but they are born of God Amen. directly. <clears throat> and these children born of God are surely God's sons. And this is God's desire. Right? Of which God made an intention, and this intention became his purpose, his economy. What the New Testament teaches is this economy. In this economy, God was trying to carry out this economy in triple dispensing because God is triune. So in many things, whatever he did, 
he did in threefold. For instance, in Luke chapter 15, even talking about a sinner to be saved, the Lord Jesus gives us three parables, right? Firstly, the parable of the shepherd, seeking for the lost sheep. Then the parable of a woman, seeking for the lost coin. And then the parable of a loving father, receiving the return prodigal. Three stories. And these are threefold grace for sinners to be received back into the Father's house. In the New Testament, too many portions showing us the truthful doing of our triumph God. For instance, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, it says what? The grace of Christ the Son and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of God the Spirit be with you all. You see, God's presence be with his believers in threefold way. In the way of love, in the way of grace, in the way of fellowship by his divine trinity. Here in Ephesians chapter 1, very strange, it says, Blessed be God who has blessed the believers uh -huh, in threefold dispensing. Firstly, by the Father, secondly, by the Son, thirdly, by the Spirit. Then eventually, uh, this dispensing will be carried out by the transmitting of the transcending Christ. Amen. Marvelous. I like to say this. <laughs> the Father's dispensing issues in many sons, right, to form God's household in sanctification. Then the sons dispensing in his redeeming and his saving, right, issues in a kind of heritage a treasure to God. God got something as his possession. You see, not only the sons, but also some possession as a treasure. Then the spirit dispensing in his sitting and praising issues in what? Issues in even read. The banner. I need you to read the banner. You read the banner. The third banner. You have to uh, realize four banners tells you four kinds of issuing. The first issue from the fathers, depending, is in many sense, forming his household. Then the sins, dispensing issues in what? In the kind of heritage, as God's private possession. That means all the many sins issued from the Father's dispensing will become a treasure Amen. to God as his heritage. Then the Spirit dispensing issues in God as our inheritance. Amen. But not the church yet. You have the many sins, you have a God possession, you have our inheritance in the church yet. Until the transmitting of the transcending Christ 
came in to transmit. That's the entire day of God dispensing. The church issues here. The many things, God's heritage and our inheritance, the God, all these uh -huh, form a particular thing in this earth. What is this? The church. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. This is chapter one. Amen. Have you got it? Chapter one of Ephesians. The main thing is the matter of dispensing. Amen. You may ask me, brother, how could you prove that in Ephesians 1, there is such a thing which you call dispensing. How can you prove? Well, listen to this. I have to read to you verses 4 and 5. Firstly, I'd like to read to you verse 3. Christ is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. These are spiritual blessings. No doubt, these blessings will be carried out by the Spirit. Right? Otherwise, they could not be called a spiritual blessing. The spiritual blessing in the heavenlies and in Christ, spiritual, heavenly, and Christ. Wonderful. Amen. Right? And the first item of this blessings is the Father's what? Choosing. Amen. The Father's choosing. When I was young, in reading these words, I was somewhat misled to think God choosing is one thing. Then God predestinating is another thing. This wrong. Tonight I tell you, this wrong. From where I got the knowledge that this is wrong from the grammar of these two verses. Now I read to you. Even as he prays, he chose us, my eyes is not so good. In him, that means in Christ, before the foundation of the world, to be holy. He chose us to be holy. Amen. And without blemish, before him in love. Comma. Grammar. Next verse. And predestinated us. Is my reading, reading right? No. no. It is not and. But what? Predestinating us. This predestinating is can modify. Modify the predicate choose in verse 4. So these are not two things. These are one thing. God chooses us. How he did the choosing? He did the choosing by marking us out. Predestinating better be translated into marking out. This was one thing, not two things. God chose us by predestinating us. Choose us to be what? Choose us to be holy. And for what? For the sonship. Because you have the choosing, right? of God's people that they could be holy for a purpose. With what purpose? The purpose that they all will be made sons of God. 
they all will be participating in the sonship. Amen. Then you say, brother, that's why we couldn't see the thought of dispensing. I'd like to check with you. I mentioned already, for one person to have sons, and this person surely have to beget the sons. Begetting means what? Begetting means imparting your life into a sons. And this imparting is dispensing. If you dispense yourself, you get your children. If you don't dispense, or you have nothing to dispense with, sorry, you don't have children. All the children, the proper children, come out of your dispensing of your life into them. Think about it. Without God dispensing, how God could have sense? Right? To have sense means dispensing. And God did the dispensing. The Old Testament we couldn't see. But when we come to the New Testament, we see this is fully unveiled in John chapter 1. He came to be received. Then whoever would receive him, he will give that one the right, Amen. the authority. What is authority? The dispensing. What is the right? The right is the very divine life dispensed into me. Amen. I got the life of God, and this life is my authority to be sons of God. No one can deny the whole earth with all the angels. <clears throat> what I meet, I am a son of God. Because I got his life dispensed into me. Amen. This is my authority. This is my right to be God's son. So uh, here you can see. You can see what? You can see God's dispensing. God dispenses himself in this way. By what way? By the sanctifying way. <laughs> God created millions of people. Right? Millions of people. How could just a small number become his sons by God's sanctifying spirit. Right? Could you see this? God sanctified us to become his sons. My, from my youth, I studied the spiritual things, of course, I studied a number of books talking about what is sanctification, what is to be holy. You see, <coughs> in the training I told trainees already, uh, John Wesley says, to be holy is to be sinless perfect. So he says, Sinless perfection is holiness. I had no doubt about it because I didn't feel satisfied with that kind of interpretation. Then I read on. The brethren, they put out some teachings saying, uh -huh. holiness, sanctification, is not a sinless perfection, but it is a transfer of your place. They say in Matthew 23, the Lord Jesus said, the gold is made holy, sanctified by the temple. Then they say, 
This is not a matter of sinless perfection, right? This is just a transfer of the place. When the gold was on the market, that's common, that's worldly. But when the gold was separated into God through the temple, it is sanctified. It is true. But later on, we were still not satisfied. We read the Bible further, further, further. Then, in uh, these epistles, we found out sanctification huh, is much, much deeper than this kind of interpretations. Amen. Sanctification is to separate God's people into God for God to work them, to work on them, and to work in them, to make them firstly God's sons. Can we say this? From that time we got a new understanding of sanctification. Sanctification firstly is by the Spirit, always. God had an intention. God made an economy to get many sins. Then the Spirit came to separate the ones God chosen into God, ready for God to beget them. First, they got sanctified into God. Then through this sanctification, they became the object of God's begetting. So God came to beget them, making them sons. And this making sons was through the sanctification of the Spirit. This is why in Ephesians 4 you have sanctification into holiness. Then in the following verse you have the sonship. Right? You have the sonship, the making sons in God's sonship. Sanctification and sonship are two little steps of one thing. Firstly, the Spirit came to sanctify you as God to the people. Then you are ready to be begotten by God into his sonship. But this you could say surely not only sonship needs the dispensing, but also the sanctification. Being made holy needs dispensing. Think about it. Without God dispensing his holy nature into our being, how could we be holy? Holy is a particular word denoting something related to God. Who is holy? No one is holy. Even perfect, not holy. Nothing is holy, only God himself. Right? God is the only one who is holy. Amen. If God has not been dispensed into me, now how could I be holy? I need some element. I need some holy element right, for me to be made holy weight. So, when the Holy Spirit comes, I tell you, he brings God's holy nature into us. And that holy nature becomes the very holy element for the Holy Spirit to sanctify us with. So, I like him. 841, it says what? Your holy nature right, makes me holy, right? And your resurrection power makes me victorious. We do have God's holy nature right, imparted into our being. And this holy nature becomes the holy element with which we are made holy. 
And this meeting holy is for what? For the begetting of the saints. So both the imparting of the holy nature and the begetting sons are a kind of a dispensing. Then you may say, Brother Lee, now we are clear. What has this to do, to do with our daily life? My, this is my burden. This is my burden. Dear saints, you have to know this sanctification for sonship is still going on. It is not a matter once then for all the time. No, it did have a start, but this continues to be all the time. Every day you have to remember that God's Spirit is sanctifying you. For God to impart his, more of his holy nature into you, and more of his holy life into you, to make you not just begotten, but to make you growing. And you have to grow. And I have to grow. And we all have to grow. Grow by what? Grow with what? Right? I was there in Christianity for years when I was young. I was very much taught. They say you have to grow. As a young man with some part of the mind, I always doubted to grow, to grow, to grow what? Or to grow with what? Right? And today we know for us to grow physically in our body, right, we need a life, firstly. And we need the nourishment. If you have the life within, and plus the nourishment, you have the proper growth, right? Look at your babes. One of your babes was born just five and a half pounds. That's small, right? But after 10 months, he becomes 10 and a half pounds. He has grown. Grown in what? Grown in his human life. He has inherited a life from his parents. In other words, his parents have imparted their human life into this child. Then the mother feeds him every day. Then he grows. He grows with the nourishment in the human life. Am I right? And today, in principle, it is the same. We were born of God. Right? God has imparted his life, even himself, into us as life. So we were born of God, and we got this life within. Then we need to grow. To grow in what way? in the way being nourished. Right? Then you grow with your nourishment in the life of God. You think about it. I was not taught in this way, dear saints. I was groping for years. Then I myself learned this way by my groping. Oh, thus far, I can say, this is why I got a burden. We all got born, no doubt. We had the birth, right? The birth is a beginning. The birth is not a graduation. After the birth, we need to grow. This is my burden. To grow, by what way? To grow in the life of Christ in the divine life, to grow in the eternal life. With what? With the proper nourishment. And you have to know, 
either the sanctification or the sonship. Both of them are always carried out by the Spirit. So here, Ephesians, 4, uh, 4, Ephesians 1 calls these a spiritual blessing, a blessing by the Spirit. Today, you must learn to live by the Spirit, to act according to the Spirit, to have your being all together <coughs> by the Spirit, with the Spirit, and according to the Spirit. As long as you are just having your being by the Spirit and act according to the Spirit, I tell you, you are ready to grow in the divine life. Then you need some nourishment. This is why we have to read the Word. This is why we have to listen to messages. This is why we have to come to meetings. But the three ways, by reading the Holy Word, by listening to spiritual speakings, by coming to the meetings, always we got nourished. Amen. So we grow. Dear saints, I'm quite much concerned that maybe among us, many dear ones are very good, seeking after the Lord, but they still haven't got the way to grow. They are not on the way to grow. Just like you drive a car, you have not found the freeway. Right? You are hinting by this road, by that lane, to get on the freeway. You still haven't got on this freeway. Once you got on the freeway, you have to be careful about the direction. Right? If you should head toward the south, you shouldn't drive toward the north. Right? You got on the right freeway with the right direction. Then your driving is okay. Among us, I thank the Lord, a number of the saints. I do realize now they got on the right way for their growth. But still you need some revelation to see what is the right way to grow in the divine life according to the New Testament teaching. This is just a dealing with the spirit. You must walk, you must behave, you must act according to the Spirit. All the day long, every day, morning till evening, even with your children. Don't despise that. Even with your children, you have to behave yourself according to Spirit in order to keep you in the divine life. Nowhere is the divine life but the spirit. But the spirit. You must get right with the spirit. Get yourself right with the spirit. You must what? You must uh -huh, have your entire being in the spirit. And you must do everything and behave yourself according to the Spirit. When you are speaking something to your children, be careful. You know, I noticed, even I myself, the parents quite often would be afraid to say everything, to say everything, right? To say things to the others, you are afraid that you might make, you might make, you might make mistakes, but to your children, you don't care. Right? You like to say anything. That's wrong. That's wrong. I got corrected by the Lord quite often. Sometimes I was scared I to say something to my child. That's wrong. Don't say anything 
according to your taste, but you have to be regulated, right? Corrected, adjusted, to say anything, to do anything according to the spirit. It is the spirit who sanctifies you into sonship. It is the spirit who actually begets you that you may be born of God. Sanctification is through the spirit. Sonship is also through the spirit. Without the spirit, there's no sanctification. Without the spirit, there's no sonship. You see? God chose us to be holy. In other words, God chose us to be sanctified into sonship. These are not two things. There's one thing. But you have to know in these two things, right? In these two things, to be sanctified into sonship is altogether a matter by the Spirit, in the Spirit, with the Spirit. Today, so many of us got born for 10 years, I noticed. I've been here, you know, just in Anaheim for 17 years. Many of you, we've all been meeting together. I watch over you, of course, you, you also watch over me, right? I found out a number of their saints been here for this many years, no growth. No growth. Why? They meet, they read the Bible, they listen to messages, they don't care for the spirit. When they like to talk, they just talk in a gossiping way. When they like to say something not so good about others, they just criticize. But still, they love the Lord. They say, I love the Lord. I love the recovery. I love the church life. I'm here. Yes, you are here. Meeting, listening, reading. Yet, you wouldn't care a bit for the Spirit. And this is wrong. This is wrong. You have to take care of the spirit. Now, I look further uh, to tell you something. That is, today, this spirit, who is so much right up with sanctification and with God's sonship, is right in your spirit. In your spirit. He's right here in your spirit. If you are taking care of the spirit, you should first take care of your spirit. Amen. For instance, you are going to speak a word to your child. Right? I don't know about you. I believe it should be the same. I do know about myself because I experience a lot. I have too many children. I have over 20 third generation grandchildren. I have uh, 13 great grandchildren. How many children I have? Not one child is not a bothering one. I say again, no child is not bothering you. So quite often you got you got what? You got mad. You became angry. So the Bible says, okay, don't provoke your children. You got mad, it's okay, but don't provoke. <laughs> if anyone who got mad with the children, yet do not provoke, provoke, he must be today's Teresa, <laughs> a saint. Jack, you have children. Can you got 
angry with your children? Do you not provoke them? Very much so. You may pop. <laughs> and this beating is provo provoking. Right. Outside, the children got subdued. Also, inside, psh. <laughs> you see, that is wrong. When you go to be angry, you have to take care of your spirit. Does your spirit agree with you? Or this is just your emotion? Right? Just your emotion. So you should deny your emotion and turn to your spirit. And then in your spirit, the spirit will speak to you. Will speak to you, be quiet. Go to, into a room and pray. Don't talk to your child, child at this time. And that is a kind of sanctification. Right? Then, not only so, when you got into a room and pray, the speaking spirit kept speaking, read a portion of the word. And you did. You got nourished. No doubt, just such a little thing, you grow. You grow in the divine life with the spiritual nourishment. The same thing. When you go to buy a tie, a necktie, right? If you just go, I like it. I like the color. I like the style. I like the material. I like it. I like it. This is wrong. Even to buy a tie, you should take care of your spirit. What your spirit would say to you. I believe, because I know by experience, the spirit surely will say, this color is not good for you. This tail is too much for you. Even this material is not for you. If you would listen to your, to your spirit, the Holy Spirit will speak more in you. Everything they are saying. Everything. And I noticed among us <clears throat> now, we are promoting the prophesying. Right? We are promoting the prophesying, charging everything to open up the mouth. I noticed some dear ones that are very lovely. The nice persons, very lovely, but only one thing, even you keep pick up a whip behind him, speak. Otherwise, I whip you. He wouldn't speak. <laughs> and I noticed some, because of this, they came. They would not stop coming to meetings. They still kept coming, but they came to sit at the very rear at a corner. <laughs> or, I tell you, we the ones who are taking care of the saints, we know, don't touch too much. Let him go. Don't touch too much. If you touch too much, he has stopped coming. Then we say, okay, we don't touch. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. One year, no speaking. Another year, no speaking. Even five years passed, no speaking. Sometimes I got really bothered. I said, what is this? Do they have a mouth <laughs> with two leaves and with a tongue? And do they have spirit? Have them be saved? And the answer is all oh, positive. Yes, they do have a mouth with two leaves, with one tongue, and they've been regenerated. And they love the Lord, and they love the recovery, they love the church. They just wouldn't speak. I tell you, finished. You be sure, assured, you will never have one into growth.
You must take care of your spirit. Get down on your knees in your bedroom. Amen. Taking care of your spirit. See what your spirit will say to you. I do believe strongly your spirit will say, man, you are too, too stubborn. Why you wouldn't listen to the church? Why you would go along? You would not go along with the church to speak. Then if you would take care of your spirit, the spirit, the big spirit, will get the chance to speak a lot of things to you. Then the next meeting, you will come to the meeting, taking care of your spirit. I tell you, you will stand up. There are sayings, I regret for the past. You make it confession. I tell you, the whole church will be happy. Then the more you speak, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, would speak to you. And you do have more to speak. Then you see, your growth will be just like an airplane. Amen. It flies. Within half a year, you will grow so much in Christ. Then what? Then you are much more sanctified into much more sonship. You are no more just sons. By growth, you become the heirs, growing up people, to inherit the riches of God. Then you are so useful in the church life. You become a supplier to supply, to minister the bountiful supply of the Spirit to all the congregation. They're saying, this is my burden. Don't think Ephesians 4, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, just like this happened, transpired, or took place once for all. No. Sanctification for sonship is still going on. Day by day, you are not living in your sonship because you don't care for the sanctifying spirit speaking or working in your spirit. You must turn to a spirit. Turn to a spirit, realizing that you have been sanctified and you have been uh, regenerated by the Spirit, and now this sanctifying Spirit and regenerating Spirit does have a lot to say to you. He still wants to sanctify you further, further, and further, that you may enjoy, you may participate in the sonship further and further and further, then you will grow. Then, the father will have a pleasant household. Yes, Brother Jack, you have three children. If you don't care for your spirit, I don't believe you will have a pleasant family with your wife and three children. If you will care for your spirit and let the spirit speak to you, I tell you, you will grow from a son to be an heir. As a grown up person to inherit all the riches of God. Then God could have you as a part of his present household. This is my burden. It's not just a doctrine. But for years, I was there in this chapter. I didn't see this. I only saw God choosing for holiness and God's predestination for 
Finished it. I want to sell these. Doctrinelli. But recently, I saw no. No. The blessing of Ephesians 1 starts from God choosing for you to be sanctified that you might be made much more, much more in the sonship of God. This is, this should be a daily matter. I just speak th this far, then I write to you, I will write to you <coughs> the concluding word to message one. You have a copy there. Without dispensing his holy element into our being, how could God make us holy? Impossible. Especially for God's sonship. There is the need for God to dispense his life and nature into our being. We must take care of this dispensing. Then number two. The Father's dispensing in his choosing and predestinating of the believers issues in his sonship through his sanctifying of his children people, making them holy as he is in his life and in his nature, to make them like God in the divine life and nature, but without his God, unique Godhead. This is the divine sanctification into for the divine sonship. And this is the central, this is the center of the divine economy and the central thought of the revelation in the New Testament. Such a divine sanctification is carried out by the sanctifying spirit the divine sonship is accomplished by the regenerating spirit who is the spirit of the Son of God. Amen. I hope that this would be a reminder to you that uh, from today you could read this for a few days to remind yourself that the sanctification is still going on for your development in the sonship of God, that you may grow. Then you will have a stronger church life, a richer church life, because now you are taking care of the sanctification for the sonship by the Spirit. I just say this much, and I turn the meeting to all tonight and try your best to say something. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.